All right, on my podcast tonight, I got new arm wrestling gold medalist, world gold medalist, Sean Hancock. Just got back from Florida competing in the Worlds. How you doing, Sean? I'm great, great. Thanks for having me on. Oh, no problem, dude, no problem. So um, before we get into who you are, just tell us what categories you won golds in. You won more than one, right? No, I, I only won. I only competed in one. Oh, um, well, well, that that yeah. that works. Yeah, that was just my left arm. My right arm has been out for a while, uh, um, so it was in my in my weight class, my two hundred nine weight class. But um, my I, the last time I competed with my right arm was at Worlds in two thousand nineteen. I placed eighth with it, but um, came home and I've ha- I was having some problems with it. Went in and saw a doctor. He X rayed it and found some bone spurs in there, and I just have not taken the time off to go have surgery on it yet. But that's what I plan on doing this winter, taking the time off to go have surgery on that right arm and. Uh, Try to come back next spring with both arms. Oh, okay. So you want you want, well, you know that's saying something. To be honest with you, it's saying a lot more than having multiple because you went in on one category and you won the entire thing. You know, Two hundred nine is a tough weight category. Those are some, you know, those aren't the three hundred pounders, but those are guys that are, that are pretty damn strong. You know. Yeah, yeah. I, I think all of them. I, I really can tell you any class that that was an easy class for for their weight class. I mean, there was. There was a lot of good competition there. I could imagine. How many guys did you have to go through? Uh, well, I actually ended up with a first round bye, and then uh, in, then I, you know, well, I stayed in. I went undefeated, so I stayed in the uh, on the A side of the cat of the of the uh, card. So I never had to go down and fight my way back up. So I didn't have to go through that many people. Everybody else, when they went went down to the, lo- the, the losers bracket, they had to battle back up to the top, you know, to meet me back in the finals. Right. And I, I, I didn't have to do that. So I actually had a not too bad of a day. Um, in 2019 at Worlds, I went to the losing bracket at some point and I had to do that. I had to fight my way back up, you know, and it was just out of that. I feel for those guys. I feel for them whenever they go to lose the bracket. I have to fight their way back up. Yeah, well, I mean, it's well worth it. I mean, you finally got your gold, so you put your time at work in. How many years right. have you been arm wrestling? I uh, started arm wrestling in 1995. I've been doing tournaments since 2005. My first nationals was in 2007 in Oklahoma City. Uh, no, I'm sorry. No, it was in uh, Omaha, 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 Nebraska. Yeah, that's okay. where that was. So, um, but yeah, I've been uh, doing tournaments in 2005. I didn't even hear about a tournament until 2005. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so how many uh, national titles and is this your only Worlds or you have another one? No, this is my first Worlds. All I've, right. got, I've got six international titles and just a whole bunch of different state titles. Very nice, man. Congratulations. That's pretty good. Thank and you. how old are you now? I am 44. Damn, you could do the Masters soon. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can, yeah. Yeah. Very um, nice, dude. Yeah, I've been traveling for the past five years a lot. My kids finally got big enough to where I could – before then, I was basically staying at local tournaments, you know, around just kind of like driving distance where I get back home, you know, that night or whatever. But in the past five years, I, uh, my, my kids were old enough to where I could travel. So I've been going overseas, um, been traveling all over the United States. I travel a lot with USAA. Um, I, yeah, I, I referee for them as well. So I'm, I hadn't spent my own money in, in several years going to tournaments, and I travel all over the globe doing it, and I just enjoy it. I love it, and I just thank everybody for for helping me get uh, to to where I am now. I've got three sponsors: Frog Fuel, Free Sleeve, and Mazarinko Equipment, and um, can't thank them enough. You know, they, everybody has that this helped me to get to where I am to help me travel around and not have to spend my own money and uh, actually make a little bit of money as um to do what I love doing. It's just been a blessing. That's great, man. Sean, I got to ask you one thing. Can you take your camera and put it um, horizontal? Sure. There we go. So we get a better picture of you. Um, tell us about your sponsors and uh, what kind of sponsors. And you have to send me all the links of your sponsors after we're done so I can put them in the, uh, in the description and people know where to go. Yeah. Uh, well, Mazarinko Equipment was my first sponsor. I actually... I do a lot with them because they're PAL. I'm the uh, North, I'm the American ambassador for the PAL. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm also the uh, North American ambassador for ERPA, and that's also with PAL. PAL owns ERPA, and uh, so it was kind of a, just a natural thing for Mazarinko Equipment to uh, pick me up and sponsor me. And I'm their uh, North American master distributor, so they ship me over big shipments of of goods and 
I send those out to, to, to smaller distributors and anyone who wants something, they can, they can contact me and, and anything that's on the website I have. So they can contact me and uh, buy it through me and I'll, I'll ship it straight to them here from the States because when you, you know, when you order something from overseas, it, sometimes it takes a long time and the shipping is very expensive. That's Most of the time when you buy something from me, the shipping is $7 and I'll have it to you in about three or four days. Oh, that's great. So, okay. That's Mazarinko equipment. Hog fuel is, um, that's, uh, uh, a fuel um, supplement that the Navy SEALs invented, that's what they use in their missions, actually. It's actually anything, anytime someone can't take uh, actual food with them to eat, they, they take the little pouches, it's, fuel, it's a fuel supplement. It's just something that's not like, it's not like a Red Bull or something that's gonna hop you up. It's just something that's gonna keep you at a, at a premium rate. So, so it's, uh, it's like a, a lot of nutritional value and uh, vitamins, minerals, and all the correct, things that are necessary. Correct. Well, yeah, that's pretty cool, man. That's pretty cool. It's, 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 it's got a, it's got a lot of uh, proteins and, and BCAAs in it. The perfect amount of, of each, and it's a hundred percent digestible in fifteen minutes. So it's perfect for arm wrestlers because arm wrestlers typically arm that's wrestlers right, that's are right. and they go through the whole tournament. And the tournament ends at six or seven o'clock at nine, and they hadn't even ate. They 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 ate it at, at breakfast. You know, they, they didn't eat through the through the day. I think I might have a lot of friends that actually would like that. To be honest with you, yeah. I don't. I don't know if they already know about it, but I mean, friends, with people that I've right. interviewed over the last uh, year or so, I've interviewed a lot of arm wrestlers. I'm sure that that would be um, uh, that would be pretty interesting because I hear a lot where it's like, oh, you know, I get to a half a day, I was tired by the time I got to my end of my match, and that's why I lost or whatever. But that could be something, yeah, really worthwhile. Well, I have been a personal trainer and a sports nutritionist for over 20 years now. Oh, and wow. I do, I have never recommended any supplement out there except for the frog fuel. Whenever I found it, whenever I researched frog fuel, I actually was taking it several years before they started sponsoring me. And I was hammering them. I was on them, on them, trying to get them to sponsor me because I believed in the product. But uh, that's the only supplement that I'll recommend because all of the others are basically not digestible enough to where you, it's worth the money. I mean, you take in some of it, but you end up, you know, pissing the rest of it out. That's great. But, uh, th 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 Something I might be even interested in after a workout or something. Yep. I mean, you or, or before workout, I take it. I take it before workout during competitions. I take it every forty-five minutes. Every that's forty-five minutes, I have it in, I have it in my uh, in my bloodstream. That's but fine, um, right? you go to frogfuel dot com. Uh, my discount code on there that you can use to save twenty percent is Sean twenty. That's mm -hmm. S E A N twenty. And then my other sponsor is Free Sleeve. I'm not sure if you heard of them. I've known a lot of the. Uh, Arm wrestlers have heard of them, especially since they started sponsoring me. I've been, we had them as a sponsor for the national championships. They came out and they, they, they you know, had a big promo booth up for the national championships in Texas this year. But um, that's freesleeve.com and uh, discount code there is boom20. Very cool, man. Very cool. All right. So now that you want a gold um, in the world, it's like, where are you going to go from here? You pretty much accomplished everything. Well, uh, the guys at the gym were asking me, was I, was I going to do a two peat? And I said, well, I'm looking for a three-peat. <laughs> so it's one of those things you're never happy with what you have. Um, you know, when, you, know you, 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 you think when you start out, you think, okay, if I can just win the state championship, if I can win my own state championship, I'm going to be happy. Then you win that and you're like, dang, well, now if I can win the bordering state championships, I'll be happy. Then when right. you do that, you're like, now I need the national championships. You go after that. Now I need the international championship. Now you need the world championship. Like, right. Hey, well, now we got to have another world championship, but there's uh, there's there's multiple levels. I mean, we can win as I'll I'll, I'll go to the uh, world championships every year. I'm one of the team captains for Team USA, so we take a team every year to the United to the uh, Worlds, wherever it's going to be. So I'll I'll be there every year, competing. Um, but uh, Zloty, the Zloty Tour competition, that's something on my. Um, now, I was already there in 2019, but um, actually got it, it was the same week as Worlds. And uh, I was too wore out. I pulled four classes at Worlds in 2019, and I just wow. wasn't able. I, and the, then Zlotty Tour was the next day after that, so I just decided to bow out of Zlotty Tour. I was just too tore up from Worlds. But um, so I want to go back to Zlotty Tour and and try to do well in that. Uh, that's where your top competition is from the uh, from the world because that's an untested event. So that's your that's your World Cup, and it's untested. So um, you have your you have the best athletes, the best of the best. Yeah, the best, the best in this life tour. Yeah, that's fucking the great man. So, how many countries were competing in this year's worlds? That the one that you won in Florida? Uh, we counted 18, 18 countries there. Wow, 
that's that's impressive, dude. Like you, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and to know that you went into one category, beat everybody, you know, and took home the gold, it was almost like almost a little easy. Almost sounds like it was a little too easy for you. <laughs> hey, I, I, I had a good day. I have a lot of bad days, and I tell people all the time, if I can have a good day, if I can just go into a tournament and make no mistakes, then I'll win. Um, but it, and, and I'm not, you know, making any kind of excuse by any means, but if I lose, it's usually because I made some screw up. Right, 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 right. right. So, yeah. um, it, I mean, I did pull, I, I pulled some great big old guys recently putting on some stupid vendettas, trying to pull some of these great big old huge guys and they're just flat out stronger than me. And I, so I've lost to those guys because it, they were just stronger than me, but you know, people, my own weight category, um, if I lose to them, most of the time it's just only because I made a mistake. Right, right, right. Well, yeah, I mean, I understand that uh, people want uh, somebody like yourself who's competitive. You want the best competition, so you move up the weight and you want to go against the biggest, strongest guy. But, right. I mean, it's, you know, uh, the reason why they have weight classes is to make it as fair as possible, right? Yeah, and, right. right. you know, weight classes, male, female, masters, yeah. juniors, to make well, it as fair as possible. Well, matchups, I mean, styles make matchups too because I have beat some of the biggest guys – and then lost to somebody that wasn't half their size. And then this great big old guy that I beat goes and beats the other guy that I lost to. Right, And it's right, just right. styles. You know, different styles make matchups. And um, yeah. so it, it, it's just an interesting sport. I mean, the, for the people that don't know much about the sport, there's so much technique to it. And there's I, I tell people this like uh, chess – and drag race and mixed in one because it's got so many moves, offensive, defensive moves and counter moves like chess does, but it's everything's got to be done instantaneous like drag racing. You know, if you, if you hesitate for just a second to go to your counter move, then you just lost. Yeah. That's, I think um, I interviewed Paul Lynn and he said something similar. He said it was like high speed chess. Yeah. That was, that was, <laughs> there you go. I love Paul Lynn. Great guy. Everybody likes Paul Lynn. He's like, yeah. You know, he's like like uh, everybody's dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's one of those guys. And now he he we've talked before. He's like, yeah, everybody thinks I'm a super good guy. You know, he's like, but you know, I've I've had a you know a mean side. You know, people just don't had never seen that. And I'm like, yeah, but I mean, you don't let it you don't let it out there. You know, he's just a, just a great guy out in front of everybody. And he's one of those guys. If you have a problem with him, then you have a problem because yeah. Um, yeah. he didn't create it. Speaking of which, what do you think? Uh, I'd love to get your opinion on the uh, Paul Lynn John Brzezink. Uh uh. <laughs> no, no, you're not going there. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 I love I love Paul Lynn too much to try to go there because uh, I'm just not going to speculate on that. Now I'm uh, I'm actually refing uh, John Brzezink match this weekend, Saturday in oh, really? uh, San Antonio. He's uh, he's pulling Dimitri. Uh, there and uh, Ka Dimitri Kachin, he's pulling in uh, San Antonio, so they're flying me out to ref his super match there, and uh, so I'm looking forward to that. I see John pulling that out. Um, there, there's some people out there I've been reading about this uh, that didn't think that he's going to pull it out, but I, I do see John pulling that. Out. It's just too smart. I mean, it's just too smart. And um, I mean, I'll go ahead and step on the uh, the Paul in matchup. Paul, I love you, man. You're <laughs> strong. I love your traps. You have the best traps in the. Uh, in, in the sport, but dude, you know you got your hands full. You know you got your hands full when you're going up against the goat. I'm, I'm going the other way. Paul is going to rip him up. <laughs> He's going to tear. Well, you know, I, I don't know if you saw the interview, but I told I told Paul when I answered him that um, I have my own uh, uh, ranking system when it comes to uh, the sports that I cover. So I have my own ranking system in bodybuilding, powerlifting, arm wrestling. And that's basically the first person that gives me a shot to let me interview them in that sport is the best in the world. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, that's, that's how it works. So Paul was the first. Gotcha. So I'm like, hey, gotcha. this guy, John's got no shot. Never even heard of him. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Well, I'm probably the first referee that you've interviewed, so I can just be your number one referee for now. That's it. You don't know they're the best referee in the world. That's that's where it comes. There you go. I'm, I'm good. Did you watch uh, if on on some other fun topics? Did you watch the uh, fight with Devin Lyrett and uh, Half Thor Bjornsson? Yes. And what'd you think? Uh yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was good for publicity. You know, anything that they put out there that gains a little bit of attention to our sport. Yeah. as uh, worth it to me. Um, you know, I, 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 there's a lot of trolls in our sport. 
And that's the biggest thing that pisses me off because they get out there and these are people that are, have big names in the sport. They're, they're very big names in our, in our sport, but they, they tear it down so much. And I'm like, and they tear down the people who are bringing uh, a, 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 a limelight to the sport, you know, like um, for example, example, um, Michael Todd, you know, there's people that there are very big people in our sport that tear him down, tear him down, tear him down. I'm like, wow. Yeah, well, he's doing, I mean, a, he's, he's doing a that? hell of a lot more for this sport than they are. I mean, he travels the country. Actually, he travels all over the world promoting this sport. There are people that know this sport because of Michael Todd that never knew this sport because of these people that are tearing him down. And that just, I mean, I tell everybody, I mean, I'm not a, I'm, I like Michael Todd, but I'm not his biggest fan. He's right. got a lot bigger fans than me, but I take up for him for one specific reason. He builds our sport up. And um, he hadn't done anything to tear it down. He, there's a lot of eyes that are open to our sport because of him and to have people just go in there just to tear him down because of why? Because they're just a troll. They just think it's funny. That just, that just pisses me off. But well, I don't blame you. I don't blame you at all. I don't like uh, laptop tough guys, you know, telephone tough guys. I don't like that at all. Um, why do you think, though, why do you think he has a target? Why do you think people troll him? What do they say? I mean, what does he – he stinks? He's like the, one of the best in the world. How could they possibly – Man, he can – I think anybody that's good, you got a lot of people that are jealous of them. Yeah, okay, um, yes, yes. Yes, yes. So, yeah. I think jealousy is a lot to do with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. A lot of people – I mean, because – I mean, he's, he's considered one of the best in the world. So you have a lot of people out there, oh, he's not, this person's better, this person's better. They tear him down a lot because of his king's moves. So they, he, he started adapting his king's moves. Instead of going so far down, he started sitting above the table. Um, we in the IFA created a, a new set of rules just for that move to keep their shoulder above the table. So he, he does really good with keeping his shoulder, shoulders above the table now. Um, but I mean, now they, they're off on this other big tangent about he's on steroids, blah, 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 blah. Well, who freaking cares? Uh, I mean, come on, me. grow up, grow up. This man is out there traveling the country. He's got an RV and it is completely wrapped with Michael Todd gear with all kind of stuff to, to find out, to, to, you know, to look right. him up on the internet. He well, actually just got a, didn't he just get a contract with Redcon one? I'm not sure. Yeah. He, I'm pretty sure he just got a contract with Redcon one. Redcon one is probably the biggest if not if not one of the biggest supplement companies in the world really uh, yeah and uh they're trying to not go mainstream but but they're trying to tap into other sports that have a niche following like bodybuilding yeah so they go to powerlifting they had one professional wrestler and now they're doing the armor so michael todd mm. yeah it's interesting so go ahead yeah. i didn't mean to cut you off i apologize no i was just saying i mean he's got his rv wrapped and he's traveling the, the country in his rv so like literally somebody driving down the back roads of omaha nebraska wherever it may be just drive down the back roads and they pass it they're up here right beside this rv like man this is kind of cool what is this guy monster michael todd and right. they google him on on their on their phone you know while they're passing him and instantly they learn about the unknown sport of arm wrestling right, i mean right, right. i don't know if you hear it or, or not but us in the sport we hear it all the time arm wrestling is a thing oh yeah, yeah people don't know it's a thing they don't even know that it exists yeah i always knew but, that it existed i just uh, never knew it had the, the tremendous following it had yeah uh, you know yeah, it was like when i opened pandora's box it was like wow oh, i didn't yes. realize it, you know once you're once you would you get into the world of arm wrestling it's like like a cult like following you uh you, you kind of learn about everything that's going on then i mean we're 82 countries worldwide um we have we fit all the criteria to uh, be an olympic sport and there's certain reasons why we're not an olympic sport i know all those reasons that's things we're working on too that's actually one of my jobs with the uh, pal usa is to try to um move things to the to the forward front to 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 have us kind of re-acknowledged uh, by the uh, PAL, I mean, by the uh, uh, um, uh, Olympic Committee. Okay. Try to have us um, reevaluated to, to, to possibly, like I said, there's a, there's a, there, it's basically comes down to money, the reason we're not an Olympic sport. Right, right, right. But, okay. So to have that meeting again and to be evaluated in an Olympic sport, that's something that we're trying to get done. Oh, that's fantastic. That would be great. I don't Yeah, I wouldn't see why not, right? I mean, so many countries are into it. That yep. would, and it would definitely yep. it would definitely shine a huge light on the professional aspect of it. Well, what it what it basically takes is we 
that they're not sure about is um, you, you basically you gotta have the members paying fees, yearly fees. You gotta have a certain amount of members per country paying, paying these yearly fees to the Olympic Committee okay. to be recognized as an Olympic sport. And they're not sure that they would have that many countries, have that many athletes in each one of the countries pay those uh, Olympic fees. Mm -hmm. to, to be in to be in the Olympics to be considered an Olympic athlete, but okay. it goes it goes a lot a lot deeper than that a lot deeper than that. I just don't I don't even really want to on that because it goes we can spend hours on on, on that part. Yeah, no, we don't but, have to uh, we don't have to dwell on that definitely. Yeah. Not. So now you you said I just want to know some about yourself. You said you had kids or any of your kids arm wrestling. Uh, my son has and he still does some. He likes doing it. You know, places he'll he'll go somewhere. And um, someone will, will know that he's my son, and they'll say, "Oh, you and you arm wrestle or whatever else," and they'll, they'll get into the conversation, and um, and he'll he'll end up arm wrestling some of those guys. He's won a little money at some of the places he's got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like, just recently, he went to a nightclub, and uh, he had cut off sleeves on his shirt, and he was trying to get into this nightclub. And they said, "No, you can't come in because you have cut off sleeves." And uh, and and I think somebody recognized him, and uh, they said, "Hey, do you arm wrestle?" And he said, yeah, I do some. He said, i tell you, this is one of the security guards. And he said, if you arm, he said, if you beat me arm wrestling, I'll give you a shirt and you can get in here. So uh, he wound cool. up beating this great big old guy. Yeah, of and course. Uh, he, he beat him. And uh, so the guy gave him the shirt, so he get into the nightclub. That's but um, he's into uh, powerlifting. Though. My son likes to, likes to uh, lift weights. And, um, you know, anytime you go to a tournament, you get beat up in a tournament and you can't work out for a week or two, oh. you know, he's, he's done that several times. He said, daddy, I don't like that. I don't like having to take off time before the tournament to heal up. And I don't like having to take off a week or two after a tournament to, to heal back up after the tournament. So he, he would rather, he, he just concentrates on his, on, on his weightlifting that he does. Yeah. You know, it seems to be powerlifting and, and arm wrestling seem to be very intertwined. There's a lot of elite powerlifters yeah. come over into arm wrestling. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Mike Aiello is arm wrestling Eric Spoto uh, soon. Mm -hmm. And Eric Spoto was um, a world record holder bench press. I think he, mm -hmm. I think he might've been the first or one of the first guys to bench over 700 raw, mm -hmm. you know, and then Scott Mendelson is also a professional arm yep. wrestler. He was yep. one of the best uh, bench right. pressers ever, you know, Right. Um, and oh, and that uh, social media sensation. What's his name? Larry Wheels. Mm -hmm. He's a, yep. he arm wrestles too yep. now. He's actually more into that than anything else. But he hurt himself recently, didn't he? I am not sure, but I'm telling you, uh, any of these guys, I hadn't seen uh, Mendelssohn. Maybe I can't recall any of them competing in a tournament. Maybe in a in a in a in a, in a, in a just a super match or something something like that. Probably maybe like Scott Mendelssohn is competing in some tournaments. I can't remember. Anyway, tournament is a lot different than a, than a super match. I mean, you go through a tournament with a heavy class, you're really not going to wipe your ass for a week. Wow, wow yeah, yeah, sure, sure. And, and so, I mean, to, to, to tell those guys that, yeah, you can go compete in this tournament, but then you're not going to be able to train hard for a month, you know, it's going to take that long to get healed back before you train hard. It just, that keeps a lot of those guys from, well, uh, matter of fact, see. I think the most people that I've seen get into this, get involved in the sport and then quit the sport was for that reason right there is because after their first tournament or their first couple of practices, they just hurt so bad. They, they didn't want to take the time to heal up or I mean, actually it keeps them from even performing in their, their daily routines and their jobs. A lot of these guys, mm -hmm. so yeah, right, they just, right, they, right. they quit for that reason. Oh yeah. I mean, uh, I didn't think about that, but you're right. You're definitely right. Yeah. I think the one with Mike and Eric Spoto is going to be a super match. I don't think it's, it's a tournament. It yeah. can't be if they're if they're going against each other, right? Right, right. Oh, okay, right. okay, okay. I'm just like I'm just learning about arm wrestling, man. I like I said, maybe the six months tops have been, you know. <laughs> well, you you're know, on a good road. Yeah, well, I'm just a YouTuber, dude. You know, uh, I I would love to give it a shot, but the truth of the matter is, I don't have the time for another friggin' hobby between my job and overtime and my side work and my YouTube and then going to the gym and then my wife. Got to keep her yeah. happy, otherwise, you know. It can definitely wrap you up. I mean, my, my, my last wife, that's what I told her whenever I was getting, whenever I was getting ready to start traveling. And and she knew I was itching for it, and she was kind of behind. She was, she was behind me in the beginning, and she knew I was getting ready to start traveling. I said, are you ready for this? And she says, yeah, you just do what you want to do. I said, are you sure? I said, because you know where I'm going to go. I said, I'm not going to slow down. I'm not going to quit. And she's like, yeah, I'm, I'm behind you, but, I mean, long story short, we ain't getting divorced, so. <laughs> yeah, they, it's 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 
it's not easy. You know, it sounds glamorous um, and it's, it sounds glamorous and it sounds uh, like, you know, of course I'll uh, ride or die and so on and so forth. But when you're um, married to a professional athlete, let's face it, that's what you are, right? Yeah. Um, it's a lot of time away from home. It's yeah. a lot of injuries. It's a lot of the yeah. only thing on your mind. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like that, that's yeah. one thing that, that they don't understand. Like it, the, the, I, I used to bodybuild amateurly, right? Mm-hmm. When I first met my wife and for the six weeks before a contest, I wouldn't even touch her because I was so focused mm-hmm. on that, you know? And yeah. then after some time, I, you know, for other reasons, I just didn't genetically didn't have it. I just decided I was wasting my time. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's not, it's not easy. You know, it's not easy to be married to something like that, you know, unless, you know, yeah. either, you, either, you, or either you do it yourself, yeah. right? Or yeah. you are so traditional that um, it's right yeah. or die no matter what, you know? And, 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 unless they just love it just as much as you do and they travel with you and right. they're right, right there with you, you know? But yeah. unfortunately, my ex-wife, she didn't like it very much. So she stayed at home, I traveled, and, you know, it just wasn't a very good combination. Yeah, it's unfortunate. You know, you would think that uh, sometimes distance makes the heart grow fondly. You would think that it would be something like, you know, I can't come home and it's like, you know, almost like uh, rekindling a relationship. But I guess it weighs, it weighs on you, you know? Yeah. But. Um, okay, so the next, are you, are you roughing, you're roughing John Brzezink soon, you said? Yes, this Saturday in San Antonio, Texas. John and who, who is he going against? Dimitri and what is what do you think about that one? I don't know who Dimitri is. Dimitri's a badass. Really? Um, okay. That could go either way. It really depends on uh, John. I ha- I don't know what John how he's been training, or if he has been training, or if he yeah. uh, how he's going into it. You know, um, I don't know really if John. He's one of those freaks of nature. I really don't think that John has to train an awful lot to be you know a prime. Uh, he's just one of those guys. So I still have to stay with John on this one. Yeah. But I mean, I probably would go with John no matter who he pulls, just yeah. because I'm a, I'm a huge fan of him. But if John uh, arm wrestles Dimitri and Dimitri beats him, what does that leave Paul? It's almost like, well, somebody just beat you last month. It's almost like, you know, the, the king is already toppled. <laughs> You know, I, you know, I, look, I would put myself if I'm putting myself in Paul's shoes right there. I don't care if yeah. he loses to Dimitri, and I'm gonna that's gonna give me that much more confidence. And I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna bust his ass too. And that <laughs> way, that way, look, nobody's gonna remember that he lost to Dimitri the month before, they're just gonna remember that Paul beat the good. Right, you know, right, right. And right. If, 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 I, if I'm in, in, in Paul's shoes, that's what I'm thinking of right there. Hey, I just beat the GOAT. I don't give a shit who he lost to last month or who he's going to lose to next month. I beat him right now. Right, 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 right. Yeah. All right, sure. That's fantastic, man. I'm going to let you go because I don't want to take up too much of your time. But I wanted to give you your time as a world champion. I know I have a small YouTube channel podcast, but um, I still believe in that stuff as far as, you know, an American champion. And, uh, much respect, much love to you, and I'm uh, congratulations, and I hope you do it all again and again and again. Yep. Okay. My hat's off to you, brother. Keep doing what you're doing. You're doing a good job. I appreciate you. I will. You got it. Have a good night, sir. Thank you. You too.